All right, we're back for the Mark Misty Performance Show. Today we're going to talk about lifters, uh, flat tappet lifters. Now, there's been a lot, lot of issues with flat tappet lifters lately. And, well, everybody's got their, <laughs> their thinking on why and what's going on. And it just boils down to basically manufacturing and a whole bunch of different things. But... The, the number one thing is is our oil. Uh, they, they took the zinc out of our oil. Um, I personally recommend, hold on. I personally recommend driven braking oil. It's driven BR uh, for any flat tappet engine. Um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of guys that use uh, VR1 and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's still got zinc in it. There's a lot of other oils out there but this oil here is designed for braking flat tappet camshafts, and there's some other ones out there too. Now, there's also the additives. Uh, the additives, well, you have several different ones, like you've got the Lucas uh, TB Zinc Plus. I've, I've had some success with this, but don't try to use this with just a regular old conventional oil because this is an additive. This is not an oil that's designed for flat tap break-in. This is just an additive to put the zinc in the oil. And quite frankly, uh, after I took a, a, a pretty good seminar on, on oil and, and why I don't recommend using this unless it's the only thing you can find, but use it with a, another good oil like VR1 or or something, Joe Gibbs oil, or something. Uh, I've had very good success, very good success with the driven VR braking oil. All right, that being said, after you get it broke in and you have a successful break in, run a, run a, another, like run the, the Driven XP or, 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 or VR1 or something that has zinc in it or the cam will go flat. But back to this lifter thing. Uh, you know, when you get a new set of lifters, you know, there's there's a lot of Chineseium stuff out there and there are lifters coming from China but there's pretty much uh, this big controversy over what's causing this this camshaft failure thing so a lot of them are saying it's the hardness of the lifter uh, a lot of them are saying it's the hardness of the camshaft well if you buy a decent from a decent company like uh, I, I use Mike Jones I use uh, uh, bullet I use uh, uh, Crower and I use Iski. Those are pretty much the only cam companies I use because I know I'm going to get a good camshaft. Uh, there was one theory floating around out there that the camshafts were too short on the front, the cam cores were, and so it was cause, causing the camshafts to be misaligned and that was what was causing the cams to go flat. I don't know that I believe any of that shit. I do know that if the camshaft doesn't have enough taper in it and the lifter doesn't have enough taper in it the cam's going to go flat no matter how much zinc you put in it no matter what so i will do a video on how you can check the cam taper the lobe taper uh, but the way that this works is, is the lobe is tapered to one side the lifter is tapered as well and when that lobe hits that gets against that it tends to make the lifter want to spin which acts like a bearing. So it's not just sitting there rubbing it going up and down because that will make one go flat. That's, that's when a cam goes flat. So one of the things you need to do is check the taper in the lifter. If the lifter has no taper in it, send them back. But there again, buy lifters from a good company. 
And I like the EDM hole lifter. I don't know if you can see that little hole in the end of that lifter. Yes, you can. Uh, those are, I like those. And I, I get mine from Bullet or I get them from Iski. Uh, I have had some trouble with some comp stuff. I'm not going to lie. Uh, they've always made it right, but I've heard horrible things about comp cam. But, you know, they will grind you any camshaft that's on the shelf. They will custom grind it for the same price, and they'll grind more taper in it if you would like them to. Uh, and usually when I get a comp cam, that's what I do if I want one of their grinds. So, if you want to check a lifter, the way you check a lifter is, is you hold something flat, like a straight edge up to it, and it's going to be hard to see because there's no light behind me here. Uh, but you should be able to see light between on the edges. It, it shouldn't, the bottom of that, you should be able to rock that back and forth. And it should have about, I don't know, one and a half thousandths or so to two thousandths. Uh, you know, they can't have too much. But you want to check that. If you can hold something flat up, at, uh, up against the light and see light on the edges, then you're probably good to go. Uh, if there's not a whole lot of light, you probably got an issue. And I have had some lifters that didn't have enough taper in them, and I, I sent them bastards back. So, that's the first thing you want to do. You want to check the taper in your lifters. The second thing you want to do is you want to clean it. And because uh, these, these things are nasty when they come out. So generally what I do is spray them down with brake clean. Make sure they're good and clean. Sometimes I'll take a whole set over to the solvent tank and clean them that way and blow them dry. Uh, you don't want to do this with clean hands as I'm sitting here with <laughs> Molly Lou all over my hands. Then, I, then what I do, uh, I take Molly Lou, a Molly based cam lube, and this is called Cam Shield right here. It's, uh, that's called Cam Shield. Uh, I get it from Ingetech. Anyway, and I, I brush the bottom of the lifter only, just, just brush it on the bottom like so. Now we don't want this stuff on the sides of the lifter, and I'll tell you why, because it can actually cause the lifter to stick. So do that, and then I wipe the excess off the edge so that it's just on the bottom. And yes, this does get you your hands nasty, but hey, it is what it is. Now that I do that, now I'm going to I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to bring you up closer to the engine and what I do. Okay, now that I've got you here, and you can see what I'm doing. Now what I'm going to do is is I will take now our, our lifter has just got it on the bottom. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and by the way, this is assembly lube. Uh, it's it's an oil based assembly lube. And it's got zinc in it too. So pick your assembly lube. You can use the camera, whatever you want to use. You can use regular old oil as long as you're using something with zinc in it. And I go ahead and put some of that on the bottom of the lifter. And then we're going to put it on the sides of the lifter and be liberal with it. Uh, it's going to, right now I got the oil pan off this thing, so it's going to get all over the floor. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slide that lifter in the hole and we're going to make sure that there's no burrs or nothing to catch and that lifter should oh, look it's already doing it well there it goes it should fall down into the hole under its own weight if it does that you're pretty much good to go uh, you see how that lifter's falling down in there and we want to rotate this engine around Make sure that lifter falls down. Now, see how it went back down in there? Uh, that's what you want right there. So, you rinse and repeat. I'll do one more. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to knock on wood when I say this because I don't want it to bite me in the ass, but I have not had a lot of cam failures uh, so far. Uh, I kind of stick with what I've been doing, and it seems to be working. I use a reputable cam company to grind my camshafts 
here. I'm, I'm out of the shot here. Anyway, I just put that molly paste back on there. Now we're going to make sure we get it all off the edges of it. We don't want any of that shit on the edge. Yes, I'm using my shirt as a rag. Don't judge me. So, I've cleaned this lifter, put the molly lube on it. Like I say, now we're going to roll it up. With a liberal amount of oil. In my oil. And then we're going to slide it in there. Sometimes you might have to go up and down a couple times and, and twist it around and make sure there's no burrs. And then we're going to let that lifter fall. And we're going to let that lifter fall. And then we're going to let that lifter fall. And something's up. All right, we're going to give the engine a rotation. Watch that lifter come up and fall back down on its own. If it does that, you're good to go. If you have a problem where a lifter is sticking or it's hard to get in or whatever, I don't care what you got to do to fix the problem, but you need to fix the problem. If it's a burr on the lifter, fix it. If it's a burr in the lifter board, even if you have to take the whole engine back apart, Fix it, because if you don't fix it, I guarantee you, I'm not, I, I, I'll, I'll bet a million dollars on it, the cam will go flat, and then you'll be pissed off. And then you got a mess to deal with, because when a cam goes flat, it usually tears everything else up too. So, that's my two cents on lifters, camshafts, whatever. Here, let me put the camera back up on me. Nope. Anyway, so that's my two cents on that. Uh, now I'm not. I'm, I'm. If you do it the way I said, you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, there are different camcores also. That's one more thing we need to talk about. Uh, there are other cam. There's camcores that are better than others. Uh, let me see if I can find one. Show you. Okay, I can't find <laughs> I can't find one. Anyway, there are several different types of cam cores. Uh, and something else. There's low block, uh, what they call low block, where the lobes are. It's a little beefier around the lobes. Uh, there are P55 cores, which a lot of people say that's a better core. It's a harder core, but then they say they're brittle. Some people say they're brittle and they break during valve flow. I've never had that issue, but. Uh, I tend to like my cams ground on a P55 core, but that doesn't mean you have to. Uh, everybody's got their own opinion on it. Everybody's, you know, you, you change with whatever's working for you. So get with a just get with a good cam grinder. And, and I tell you something, Mike Jones cams are probably I'm going to say Mike Jones cams. Now they're high, they're not cheap, but you get what you pay for, and uh, he's going to grind you a camshaft that ain't going to go flat. He's not going to steer you wrong. Same thing with Bullet. Bullet's a good camp company. And Isky, if I was going to buy an off-the-shelf cam today, right now, it would be an Isky cam. Uh, that's my two cents. Now, I'm not bashing any of the other cam companies, but I have had some issues with some Howard's cams and some Howard's lifters uh, to the point to where I just quit buying the stuff because I couldn't get them to make it right. Howard's, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. I tried to talk to you at PRI about it, and you acted like I had a dick on my forehead or something. So... That's my two cents on, on camshafts uh, and, and lifters and installing them and whatever. And I, it's, it's trivial shit, but this cam problem has become so bad across the United States or across everywhere. Uh, people just don't even want to use them. But there are certain classes. I mean, if I had my choice, no, I'm going to use a roller, but there's a lot, of, a lot of classes of racing that still require you to use a flat tab of cam like this class right here. This is... You know, IMCA Sport Mod, well actually this is USRA Sport Mod, same thing. Uh, and you have to run a flat tap and can. It's just the way it is. So that's my two cents on this and I hope it helps. I hope some of that helps. Uh, if you follow the certain steps and use the right break-in oil, use a good camp company, you're probably not going to have any issues if you break it in right. That's something else. So one last thing I'm going to leave you on is how you break it in. 
you need to make sure everything is set. You need to make sure the timing is, the distributor set close. You need to make sure there's water in it. You need to make sure the engine is primed up, uh, the, you know, oil system is primed up. Everything's done so that when you flip that switch and hit that button, <coughs> that engine will fire. I don't care what people say. Th that old adage of cranking the engine over till it's got oil pressure is absolute bullshit. That's the fastest way to get a cam to go flat. You want that engine to fire and come up to RPM right now. And uh, I generally get mine to go up. You know, I, I, they say to run them at least 2,000 RPMs for 30 minutes. I vary the RPM, and I'll tell you why. Uh, other than the direct lube that comes from the direct lube lifters, the camshafts only, they only, flat type cams only get their, uh, their oil supply from what's draining back in the oil holes and the splash off the side clearance in the rods. Um, maybe that's another reason I haven't had. I like to run a little more side clearance than everybody else does, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of my own thing. But I vary the, the engine RPM between 2,000 2800 back and forth rev wop, 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 a couple times uh, and I keep doing that for about 30 minutes and what that does is it changes the spray pattern that's coming out of the side of the rod so if there's any dry spots it's going to hit those dry spots and help it out um, it also helps to hold the wrist pins in the rods when you're doing that I, it's all critical stuff when you first fire an engine and in, in my opinion and uh, I've been doing this for over 30 years now uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I know a lot will not agree with some of what I'm saying, but I know it works for me and it has for all of these years. Um, we've had some su very successful race engines. Uh, I, I couldn't even tell you how many feature wins that some of my customers have had. I mean, I know it's so... I, I don't... I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, you know, this is what works for me. And, and do everything you can to make something work for you and then stick with it. But the biggest recommendation is to find a good cam grinder and stick with it. Uh, and like I say, my recommendation, if you're going to buy an off-the-shelf box, out, off, you know, call Iski. Uh, they pretty much got you covered, man. And they got some good grinds. That they're, they're doing some great things at Iski. Oh, one more thing. There is a new lifter that Comp has out. Now, there, that's something else we hadn't talked about either. Okay, so I'm not done yet. There's a new lifter called a DLC. It's a diamond-like coating uh, that is, I, I've got a set ordered now. Um, that is supposed to end this camshaft going flat problem. I've heard really good things about it. I, I haven't tried them yet myself, but I've heard really, really good stuff about them. Comp also will uh, nitrite a camshaft and harden it if you, if you pay for it. Um, some of my higher lift cams like I mean there was a, a situation where we had to run a flat tappet cam in one of my customers engines and there was no there was no lift rule or anything but I had you know we were like 680 lift on this cam ish somewhere somewhere around with one six rockers and some gargantuan valve springs I mean I had to put basically roller springs on it to make this work because the valve events were so fast so I had comp harden this camshaft for me and I was scared to death it was going to go flat, but it didn't. It, it, it lived. I mean, uh, that, that engine ran for two and a half years and finally kicked a rod out the side of it at 9,000 RPM, but hey, nothing lives forever. But anyway, these are some tips and some things, so I'll shut up now. This video is getting really long, uh, but there's some things I just wanted to, to go over. So, you guys get out there and build something. If you got any comments or questions, even if you hate me, even if you just say I'm full of shit, put it in the comments below, because hey man, <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Peace out.